The Labour Party lost the general election in May because they've completely and utterly failed to provide an alternative to austerity and neoliberalism. In their abject refusal to oppose the economic programme, which has forced hundreds of thousands of people in this country onto food banks, and in their total failure to listen to the concerns of unemployed workers, and instead their pandering to the festival of anti-immigrant bigotry, which has emerged with the rise of UKIP, uh, they've proven themselves to be barely distinguishable from the Tory party that they're supposed to be against. The Tories won the election not because Labour were too left-wing and not because of popular enthusiasm for the Tory agenda, but because Labour were too pathetic to actually constitute a real opposition. Now that Miliband has resigned, the race for the next Labour leader is underway. And although there aren't usually many signs of intelligent life to be found in Labour leadership contests, Jeremy Corbyn is one candidate who appears to be approaching sentience. Um, now, naturally, this is an outrage for the party. Um, the Blairites are just absolutely furious about it. Clearly, his level of compassion for the vulnerable has reached unacceptable heights, um, and therefore he must be derided as being unelectable for some reason. Considering the recent outcome of uh, Syriza capitulating to neoliberalism in Greece and putting in austerity measures when they said they were going to end it, and considering other historical examples of parliamentary leftists going back on their promises, I think that if Jeremy Corbyn were to become the Prime Minister, he would also capitulate to neoliberalism as Syriza have done and as Passock did before then. So I think that in terms of how to initiate social change, we should be looking outside of parliamentary means. We need to be looking at strikes, sabotage, direct action, occupations, etc., rather than voting for Jeremy Corbyn. However, I'm still interested in following the Labour leadership race just for the sheer entertainment of watching the Blairite wing of the party descend into absolute chaos and panic when confronted with a social democrat who is ever so slightly approaching the left. Oh no, he's, he's unelectable even though people are coming out in droves to support him. He's unelectable because reasons. The other candidates, Andy Burnham, Liz Kendall and Yvette Cooper are laughably similar and seem to agree that the best way for Labour to win the 2020 general election is on a sensible, pragmatic uh, policy programme of throwing the working class into a meat grinder. These candidates are barely even human. And just for shits and giggles, just to prove it to you, we're going to watch Liz Kendall's absolutely cringeworthy campaign video called An Open Letter to the Labour Party. Enjoy. Dear supporter, you probably think I'm writing to ask you for your vote in the upcoming election for party leader. And I am. You seem so intent on avoiding expressing any discernible opinion on anything whatsoever. Um, I'm not certain that you even exist. Um, so right now the chances of me even considering uh, voting for you for Labour leader, let alone to be the Prime Minister, are running on empty. But what really matters for our country and our party is another election. The one we'll fight together in 2020. By then, our country will have suffered under five more years of the Tories. More working families in poverty. More people trapped in low-paid, low-skilled, insecure work. More young people leaving school without the skills they need to succeed. And more communities left behind. Five more years of neoliberalism. Five more years of austerity. For fuck's sake, just name the problem. Except, oh wait, you can't name the problem because your party is just as responsible for it. The Labour Party has had just as much of a role in neoliberal restructuring as the Tory party has had. One of the many reasons why parliamentary politics just fill me with despair is that political parties don't seem to achieve much more other than just perpetuating their own authority. Um, but that's unsayable because it makes people think about systems and structures, which is far too dangerous. It's too dangerous for the powerful if people start thinking, oh, hang on a minute, these parties are essentially the same. Why are they the same? Well, they're the same because we have such and such an economic system and a political system that means you have to represent certain economic interests and so on and so forth. That's 
far too dangerous for the powerful. So instead, everything has to be blamed on specific political parties and individual politicians rather than any analysis of the wider problem. Like you, I am Labour because I want Britain to be more equal. And our party is the greatest champion of equality and opportunity our country has ever known. Even if we're talking about old Labour, this is a lie. Even the Attlee government sent in troops to break the strikes of dockers and gas workers. And they used the courts against striking miners in 1947. Even in the supposed heyday of old Labour, the party could hardly be described as the greatest champion of equality and opportunity that the country has ever known. The NHS, sure start, the minimum wage. The longer we're out of power, the more these great successes are put at risk. These great successes also seem to be put at risk when you're in power, it seems. Uh, considering the fact that in 2009, the Labour Health Secretary, Andy Burnham, privatised the Hinchingbrook NHS Hospital, handing it over to Circle Care, uh, a private provider, for profit. Uh, ironically, Andy Burnham is now running a campaign for a Labour leader on a platform of allegedly opposing cuts in privatisation of the NHS, despite making the only privatisation of an NHS hospital in history. Despite the rhetoric about how Labour will supposedly protect the NHS, they have taken the first steps in dismantling our health service. This rhetoric is even more ironic coming from someone who said earlier this year that, quote, there will remain a role for the private and voluntary sectors where they can add extra capacity to the NHS. I offer the fresh start our party needs to regain the trust of voters who've turned their backs on us. Yes, by not having any discernible opinions about anything. I'm not Blairite, Brownite, Old Labour, New Labour. I want to be today's and tomorrow's Labour. So many utterly meaningless platitudes. Well, you know what they say, it is what it is. Vote Liz Kendall for Labour leader. That should be your campaign slogan. I believe our party has the imagination, the ideas and energy to win in 2020 and make sure Britain faces the challenges of the future. Are you... are you a hologram? Like, I'm not convinced that you're actually a real flesh and blood human being. Right, I, it's like you're this fictional person that was just created entirely out of thin air with lots of paperwork like Randall Stevens in The Shawshank Redemption. And physically there's just nothing there except this hologram that just goes about spouting meaningless platitudes about hope and change. I wasn't born into the Labour Party. I chose it. Just like we're going to have to persuade millions of Britons to do at the next general election. Every child's wish to come true Misery to be phased out and replaced by happy things. Magic beans for every household. We need to win. Sorry, come again? We need to win. Pardon? We need to win. You're, you're saying it weird. We need to win. Cool whip! We need to win. I want you to be part of a winning team. A winning team, did you say? Oh, a winning team, I see. I won't rest until we put our values into action in government, because when Labour wins, so does our country. You know, if at the end of this video, you were to suddenly take off your mask and be like, ta-da, it's Nick Clegg, <laughs> look, I've fooled all of you. Uh, I would have found that to be quite a funny and satirical joke, uh, but, but it's not satire, it's, it's your campaign video. Th this is just so tragically awful, I don't even, so I ask you to vote for me as the candidate best place to achieve this. Yours, Liz. That's it. Like, you haven't even given a single reason why people should vote for you. Like, you, you've said literally nothing in this video. You know what? You, sh you should just stop, okay? Just, just stop, right? Powering the Kendall bot probably takes up a lot of electricity and resources. So whoever's responsibility it is to maintain Liz 3PO should consider just wiping the data and putting the parts to better use, okay? You can make solar panels with those pieces of metal. In all seriousness, Liz Kendall is just the classic example of the tendency of our political system to just sort of churn out these shit politicians 
who are just exactly the same, uh, who have these carefully crafted ways of speaking to people, making certain hand gestures and using buzzwords and phrases that may as well have been selected by PR teams. They're so out of touch with the population. Uh, they go to these elite universities that are completely beyond the reach of most working class people and they implement policies which by and large advance the interests of a tiny wealthy minority and screw over the rest of us. Jeremy Corbyn is clearly better than Kendall, Cooper and Burnham but as I said earlier considering the numerous examples throughout history of supposedly left-wing people going back on their principles once they actually get into power I think that it's perfectly reasonable to view someone like Corbyn with caution and scepticism. Although Corbyn is clearly the best of a bad bunch, I think that it's important not to get swept into this Corbyn mania that's going on um, when this energy could be put to better use. But Liz Kendall, just seriously, just fucking hell. That's, that's not a real person. Just no, no.